Good morning, everybody. Why is it red today? Who knows? Yay! Corey. Pentecost Sunday. Who remembered to wear red? For me, it's easy. I just go on one of these. So. Don't feel ashamed if you didn't. Welcome to church on Pentecost Sunday. I invite you to read the announcements. I'm not going to highlight anything today because we have a very full service with the baptism, which is awesome. And also our confirmands are giving our message today via this thing and this fancy machine. We recorded a video of their faith stories. So their faith statements are our sermon for the day. So keep them in your thoughts and prayers. At 945, they will be here for the recognition of confirmand service. So if you'd like to double up, you can be here at 945 too. And welcome our confirmands into this new journey of life after confirmation with St. Luke's Lutheran Church. Let's pray as we ready our hearts and minds for worship. The Lord be with you. Father, we thank you for this day where we celebrate the birthday of the church. We celebrate the spirit coming in so many ways. We thank you for a baptism on this day. You promise yourself and your spirit, the little Briggs. We thank you for a confirmands, Lord, who step into a life of faith with their families, with this church in a new way. There's just so much your spirit is doing. Help us to keep being part of that good work. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. I invite everybody to please stand for our greeting. I will be probably removing little pieces of the liturgy today to make room for everything, so please stay on your toes. The Holy Spirit on this day calls us together as the people of God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Confess our sins together. Faithful God. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk, walk in your way to the glory, glory of your holy name. Amen. <clears throat> to the promises of Christ. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin, and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Live as people who are set free. Amen. Amen. You may all be seated. <clears throat> hearts and let us pray together. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us the spirit. Transform us by your truth and give us language to proclaim your gospel in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, and God, now and forever. Amen. I invite everybody to stand for the good news. 
This is our traditional reading from the second chapter of Acts. When the day of Pentecost comes and the Holy Spirit alights himself upon the church, and the church is born. Kids, I'm going to give you a warning. We're going to sing happy birthday to the church for the children's sermon. So start revving up for that. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind. And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at the sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all of these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own language? For, for Bible lovers out there, this next part is literally the hardest part of the Bible to pronounce. So stick with me on this. People of Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and all the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own language we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood for the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is today's good news. You may all be seated. Okay, can, who, who would like to be a brave child with me and lead the congregation in happy birthday church. Corey, you want up? No? Henry? You guys? Anybody? Anybody? You're going to make me do this alone, aren't you? I'm okay with that. Um, let's see. Will any adults like to come up and help me lead the congregation in happy birthday church? You know the song. Dan? Dan, you're a good singer. Dan, just come on, you and me. Okay. Don't make me do this anymore. And will you be, not yet. We'll, we'll get there. You could get there. We'll get there. So, so in place of the name, it's Dear Church, right? That's, yeah, we have to raise the number. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. So everybody knows what to say. Okay. Uh, Pentecost is the day the Spirit came. It is the birthday of the church. Ready? The church is the people, not the building, right? So after we pray, I want you to turn to somebody near you and say, happy birthday, church, okay? Let us. Lord, 2,000 years ago, you sent your spirit to all of those people with all of those strange, funny names in the Bible. And now you send your spirit even today to us good humans and beyond. We thank you for your spirit. Help us to keep being part of that chain link, that that makes the church move from generation to generation. Help us to teach our children, our neighbors, all of these things. In Jesus' name, we pray together. Amen. Turn to somebody near you and say, Happy Birthday, Church. Happy Birthday, Church.
Happy birthday. For our sermon today, our eighth graders are they were they they're being confirmed at the 9:45 service, and as is tradition in many Lutheran churches, they write and share face statements with the entire church. We have a video of their face statements. Usually, they'd be sweating up here doing it in person, but they got lucky in a COVID year that we took a video and audio file of them, not knowing if we could be in church in this way at this time. If you are going to be in eighth grade someday, you don't get this privilege, so enjoy today. Um, can we get the lights in the back? So our, our kids are going to give us our message for the day. And then the audio is going to sound weird for a minute. Hang on. Got to turn down.
church, you don't get to learn about all that stuff. Like, we just think Christmas is just about Santa Claus and Easter. It's just about the Easter one. To me, my faith is the most alive when I'm at church and ready to learn about God. The gifts that God has given me are to be able to hunt fish, drive some of them, and at outdoor activities. Yeah. I am Colin, and this is my faith story. A Bible verse that I chose is Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6. Be strong and bold, have no fear or dread of them, because it is the Lord your God that Shape, my, shape or influence my faith include my parents, Pastor Eric and Pastor Ian. My parents helped me pursue my faith journey um, by making me go to Sunday school and church, even though I didn't really want to. Uh, I didn't. Oh, Pastor Eric has been teaching me this past school year about why it is important to have a good relationship with God. Pastor Gina also helped me through Sunday school church when I was younger. One of my favorite memories from church is when I went to Camp Waffle. I remember learning new things, meeting new people, and gathering together to pray and sing and worship. I really enjoyed spending the whole week with my friends. I feel God is with me when I'm doing something dangerous and He is there to protect me. Being a Christian makes me believe that God is always there and He is loving me. My faith is strongest when I'm doing something dangerous someone there for me in hard times and will help me through it. One of my favorite things from this past year was when I went to feed my starving children. I felt like it was making a difference in kids' life. I learned that there are a lot of kids that don't have access to food like we do.
So my favorite memories through confirmation these past years have been making pizza last year before COVID. We would come to school, we would come to the church early just to eat together and talk. After that, we would play hide and seek and just have a fun time. This year, obviously, with COVID, lots of things have changed. I love our big question nights that lead to really good conversations. We talk about Adam and Eve a lot, and if they're like the fun songs with the dinosaurs, but the Bible left that part out. From playing Duck Duck Goose or Duck Duck Gary on, running around outside and throwing shoes, to being inside praying for each other. I love every bit of it. I love that we can just talk about fish and possibly go fishing with Pastor Eric. I love for our church and confirmation is just so close, and I plan to keep on coming to this church and being active after I get confirmed. Michelle is basically a second mom to any of us, and we know if we need to talk about anything, we can always go to her. Thank you. Hi, I'm Anna Megan, and this is the journey of faith that created an even stronger relationship between God and myself. The Bible verse I chose was Joshua chapter 1, verse 9. He will be with you wherever you go. Something that drew me closer to God was this fall. One morning we woke up to the news that an important member of our family and someone close to him had gotten into a severe accident. Despite the choices God made when taking a loved one of many, we all prayed for the loved one still fighting in the hospital. None of us were sure what was going to happen, but praying and knowing God had a plan for him helped with all the unknowns we were all questioning. So the reason I chose that Bible verse was because through all this time that filled our hearts with grief and despair, I felt God was with my family, myself, and all others around me who needed him. I put all my trust into his hands, and he showed me he was there and hearing my prayers. Thank you.
Christ's plan for me in my life. Some questions that I would like to ask God personally someday are, why do you let people suffer? Why do you take people away from other people that they love? My favorite part of belonging to a church is that I know that I can always come and ask my pastor or anyone else that I have here, and they will always be there for me. One of my favorite parts of service is when we get up and communicate with others. Now that I am getting confirmed, in the future I would love to go on a mission trip. The end. Hi, I'm Madison Taxel, and this is my faith story. I chose the Bible verse, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be afraid, for I am with your God. Isaiah 41.10 I chose this verse because I thought I had a strong message about casting your worries to God and to stop stressing so much because God has a plan for you. Two people that are important in my faith are my mom and my mother Mason because they have helped guide me through my faith journey. One person who has shaped and influenced my faith would be Pastor Regina because she taught me how God has a plan for everyone and has taught me amazing ways to pray and to lead and has led me to have an amazing relationship with God and to let God guide me through my day. I would love to thank her for that. I believe my faith is most alive while I'm, or why I'm praying because I feel a special connection to God and when I'm at church learning about how amazing God is. One of my favorite memories is going to Camp Waffle and spending a week with Morgan. I remember Morgan and I singing so loud we almost lost our voices and I enjoyed all the activities and meeting new people and I hope to grow my faith and grow a strong relationship with God.
people because, I don't know, it just kind of makes you wonder. Things that have strengthened my faith are when people get through those tough times and they come out stronger than ever before. Travis, you can hit the lights again. All right, those are Copter Man's face stories. If you see them around town, you now know who they are too, and tell them welcome to a deeper life at St. Louis Lutheran Church. Let's have a prayer for a Copter Man, shall we? The Lord be with you. Father, we pray a prayer of thanks on this day that, that you have drawn these young men and women deeper into life with you through this church. We pray for their families as, as they shape post-confirmation life. We pray for the people here who will learn their names, who will spend time with them on sports fields, who will be examples of Christ for them, not only in this place but outside these doors. Uh, help us, Lord, that, that words spoken might not simply be words but may be fleshed out in our love for our children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We are going to move past the hymn of the day. And um, we are going to enjoy and celebrate the baptism of little Brady. So let me welcome you guys up and just a word of caution. Be careful of this stuff. Come on. And for the congregation, actually, if you guys would grab books, and you'll need to turn to page 227, congregation as well. And you guys can take it. You have the book. All right, why don't, can I get you guys closer to the font here, just kind of right in front of it? 227, page 227. Excellent. We've got parents, we've got sponsors. In baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity.
By water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ in the community of saints, we grow in faith and love and obedience to the will of God. Parents, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Briggs baptized into Christ? If so, please respond with, we do. As you bring Briggs to receive the gifts of baptism, you are entrusted with the following responsibilities. To live with him among God's faithful people. To bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper. To teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments. To place in his hands the Holy Scriptures. To nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God. To proclaim Christ through word and deed. Care for others in the world God has made. And work for justice and peace. Do you promise to help Briggs grow in the Christian faith and life? If so, please respond with, we do. Thank you. Sponsors, do you promise to nurture Briggs in the Christian faith as you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church? If so, please respond with, we do. People of God, your turn. Do you promise to support Briggs and pray for him in his new life in Christ? If so, please respond with, of course we do. Excellent. I ask everybody to please stand as we profess our faith together with Briggs' family. <coughs> Did you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God, the powers of this world that rebel against God, and the ways of sin that draw you from God? If so, we all re respond with, we renounce them. We renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty. Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may all be seated. Now you guys. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We give you thanks, O oh God, from the beginning your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family, and through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection you set us free from the power of sin and death and raised us up to live with you. Today, pour out your Holy Spirit, the power of your living word, that those who are washed in the waters of baptism may be given new life, to be given honor and praise through Jesus Christ, our Lord, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May I have the Lord's Prayer. Briggs Zilgit, you are baptized today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. You are a child of God, never to be let go. And you did really, really well. We're going to tell Briggs together, okay? You have a place in the, in the liturgy. We're going to say, you belong to Christ and you who have been baptized. Him. It's our job now to support Briggs and his family in their life of faith. On the count of threes. One, two, three. You belong to Christ in whom you have been baptized. Hallelujah. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O oh God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth. Cleanse them from sin and raise them to eternal life. On this day, sustain Briggs with the gift of your Holy Spirit. 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Briggs, child of God, you have been sealed by the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let's give Briggs a hand and welcome him to our church. We welcome you to that time. Hey. Can I For the longest time, we couldn't show off babies, but now we get to do the Lion King thing again. There's Briggs. You all promise to raise him in faith. Today you can start with prayers. The baptismal candle, of course, you can light it on his baptism birthday to remind him of his promises because you are now holding faith and trust for him and have to tell him the story. As he grows up. But here's our new member of the body of Christ. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, guys. You guys are great. Yeah, you can blow it out and hand it to mom. <laughs> um, some gifts from our church as well. I will put these in the front pews, and you guys can grab them on your way home because your hands are full, as they should be. Our quilters have quilted a quilt for Briggs, and you have the baptism candle and a little story Bible read as he grows up. Yeah. Don't thank me, thank them. That's the church's gifts. Ow. All right, everybody, our service will continue with our prayers. Thank you. Mercy is great. God is merciful. Your spirit sends us out to serve. May your spirit equip all those confirmed and baptized in your church to go out and tell the world in a unique way you follow. Spirit, O oh God, your mercy, mercy is great. God of creation, you gave us air to breathe, beauty to behold, and fruit from the land to sustain us. Bring rain to enrich our farmland. Guide us. Your mercy is great. God of faithfulness, you tend to the needs of your people, even the sighs of our hearts. Hear those who cry out to you in distress. Restore wholeness to all who are in need this day, especially vineyards, fruits, seeds, flowers, lands, seeds. And also remember John and Ella, Finley, Brent, Paul, Connie, Joel. Your mercy is great. In the hope of the new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, today may the peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Share that greeting with somebody near you. You can tell them happy birthday church again. You can offer them peace, whatever you like. Happy birthday. I'd like to thank uh, everybody here also for your prayerful offerings given to St. Luke Lutheran Church. We are not yet, not yet at the point where we pass the plate, so the offering plate is in the narthex in the back if you haven't had a chance to give. Let's join together for our offering prayer. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way that we may all know your care and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
Friends, we remember together today that on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Christ took the cup. Having given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in the meal Christ prepared for us. I invite everybody to take their wafer and hear these words of promise today for you. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Please hear the words of promise and the blood. This is the blood of Christ which is shed for you. Today may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you all and keep you in his grace. Pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, now and forever. God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need, and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We all stand for the blessing. Parents, if you'd like, you can put a little sign of the cross when you see the cross in the bulletin on your kid's head. Also a cool way to share faith at night at home with your kids before you turn on the lights. Today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Spirit. Amen.
Today, friends, go in peace. You are the church. Yes, we are. Thanks be to God. God bless. Tell them what Jesus has done. Go in peace and serve the Lord our God. So the seas about the man of love. Go into the world and tell them one by one. Go tell them what Jesus has done. Jesus has done. Go in peace and serve the Lord our God. Sow the seeds about the man of love. Go into the world and tell them one by one. Go tell them what Jesus has done. Go tell them what Jesus has done.